uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Never heard of it? Great. Seen thousands of videos about it? Doesn't matter, because you're addicted to this, and you'll still watch it even though you know all the stuff. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I usually make content like, ooh, the architecture of this common room reminds me of gothic motives. No, there's going to be none of that today. Today I'm giving you just straight up information, just down to earth, legit reasons to play the game, right? Like, almost like you met a random dude at GameStop who just starts talking about a game he likes. This is the situation. So reason number one, it's a Harry Potter open world RPG. I don't know what else do you need? Like that's, that's all you need to know. Like if this was a Thanksgiving dinner, you got the necessary parts already. Harry Potter is the turkey, open world is the stuffing, and RPG is mashed potatoes. Plus AAA is the gravy on top of it. That's it. You got the essentials of the same thing. thing Thanksgiving dinner right there. The rest is just extra stuff. Well, mine is the actual Harry Potter because it's set in the late 1800s, but you know what I mean. You'll fulfill your dreams of having a full experience of being a witch or wizard, you know, flying on a broom, going to classes and just doing all kinds of magic stuff. Number two, there's a lot of spells in the game. There's already like 23 officially confirmed spells that you can learn, including some regular ones, you know, like Wingardium Leviosa, Accio, Incendio, Alohomora. And there's also a bunch of combat spells too, like Expelliarmus, Pacificus Totalis, Confringo, Glacius, and there's even Unforgivable Curses. But the best part is that during combat, you don't have to stick only to combat spells. You can also use just the regular ones to kind of have strategic approach during the combat. But besides these verbally confirmed spells, there is about 40 on the walls of the charms class among the same ones that are already confirmed. So that seems like a low key reveal of the list of spells in the game. It's just pretty cool. But overall, you're going to have a lot of fun learn all those spells because they're not all available to you right away you have to go to classes or find friends who know them or just scrolls i don't know there you go through experience of learning spells and becoming a wizard you know number three you can explore the entire castle like for so many that's already enough reason to just buy the game. I know there's some other games where you can explore Hogwarts, but no, don't compare. Like, look at it. It's just the details in every corridor. They're like portraits moving around and it's it's massive. It The Hogwarts is huge in this game. Plus, there's a bunch of little secrets you can find around the castle. You can like discover a passageway or a chest with some loot or so many other things that we don't even know yet about, like these black mirrors and these golden plaques with different symbols on them. Number four, explore the wizarding world. So besides the castle, you're going to have this open area to explore called the Overland. There's the Forbidden Forest, the Hogsmeade Village with different shops where you can buy or sell all kinds of ingredients, gear and outfits. There's lots of dungeons around Hogwarts. There are these mines we've never seen before, other little villages and hamlets with vendors and stuff. You can even go to the freaking beach. I mean, this game is massive. They show this one portion of a map and it's there's like a lot in Hi, the Hi, I'm Ben Snow from the future and in the future the developers have already revealed the entire map of Hogwarts Legacy. But this idiot is in the past and that's why he has this only one dumb picture. So don't bother commenting and just click this video instead. Is that the same shirt you're wearing? Okay, bye! Huh. Number five story we never heard of before. Since this is a single player game without any multiplayer mechanics, there's a heavy emphasis on the story that goes all about this ancient magic that you and only you, the main character, can sense and use. And these evil wizards and goblins who corrupt creatures are trying to get to the source of ancient magic, which is buried underneath Hogwarts, by the way, and then try to overrule the wizarding world. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. It's just 
some new storyline we never heard or seen before. And yeah, I like the idea that we're going to be battling these goblins. Number six, side quests. So there's going to be a lot of things to do in between the main story missions. You can talk to a guy at the store and he'll ask you to do something. You can talk to a ghost and get a mission out of it. And they aren't just like, oh, go carry some stuff because my leg hurts. No, they're like legit missions with some even have dungeons like this haunted Hogsmeade shop quest that if you complete it, you'll get an entire store as a reward where you can sell your gear and equipment for higher rates than anywhere else. By the way, this particular quest is PlayStation exclusive for first year, but I'm sure there are other quests like that that you can do instead. You can even befriend some of the students and do their missions, like this poppy girl from Hufflepuff who so many think she's evil, who has something to do with these fantastic beasts and centaurs, or Natsai and I, or even this Sebastian guy, who if you do his quest, you'll get to learn Cruciatus Curse and torture a student. Well, you can also choose not to torture a student because you'll be making choices in the game. Number seven, choices and customization. So we're going back to the mashed potatoes part of this feast, the RPG. You'll be able to fully customize your character, choose a house and live in one of these awesome common rooms, which by the way are so intricate and they're so detailed in every aspect and even the entrances are different. They just, <sighs> sorry, sorry, they look cool. Um, and you can also choose different play styles depending on the spells or potions you learn and choose to upgrade, will be sort of changing the way you approach combat, either, you know, like stealthy and more careful playstyle or just straight up like warmonger type of playstyle. You'll be making choices all the time in this game. You can even tap into the dark magic if you want to and be a baddie. I mean, there's no morality system in the game, but as they say, that those choices are still going to be significant to the game. We do need more information about that, but there's a whole model of the game. You know, like the choices you make will define what you stand for as you build a legacy of your own. Number eight, you can have a house in Hogwarts Legacy, your own house. Like that was the best thing. Well, one of the best things I saw in the trailer, like so there's this area in the room requirement where you will grow your plants, brew potions, upgrade your gear, customize robes and stuff because you start as a fifth year student for some mysterious reason and you need to catch up with the school. So here you will have this thing called Vavarium, which is kind of like one of those suitcases that looks small on the outside, but inside you have a whole freaking bar in there. So that's where you'll have your own real estate, where all of your fantastic beasts will hang out that you caught, tamed, or saved from poachers. And this is where you'll get to have a house or like a cottage of your own and have pets roaming around. This is like the best thing. It's kind of like in Zelda Breath of the Wild where you can have your own house to sort of gear and stuff. Oh, I love it. Number nine, you can fly. You can fly on the broom or some animals like this hippogriff or a Thestral if you are on PlayStation. <laughs> There's no Quidditch in the game, by the way, which is not the worst thing, but you, instead you can have broom races. You can attend a class to learn how to fly a broom and then go do races, which is just flying through stars, but balloons in this case. And I'm so happy they did not make this into the mandatory Quidditch. This is just a side quest you can skip. I think it might be somehow related to the fact that they want to do something extra with Quidditch and just have a dedicated team and time working on just Quidditch and making it into a great game. Maybe it's going to be like an expansion later on, or I think it would be better to have a whole blown Quidditch World Cup 2 or something like that. I'm fine with not having Quidditch in, in Hogwarts Legacy. I mean, it's still there. It's in the game because there's a Quidditch pitch, but we're not going to be playing it. So there will, we might watch the game, but we're not going to play it. It's not playable. That's fine. And number 10, combat. On top of all of this, all the stuff you can explore, you can do with the magic classes, you battle different witches and wizards. You, you'll battle in fairy dementors, I'm sure. 
And even goblins, look like look, they, they have these swords and spears and axes. You can roast them, you can smash them on the ground or throw an explosive barrel at them. This is awesome. Or you can just kill them with a Vada Kedavra if you want to. Or a just, just explode them with this unknown ancient magic spell. Or maybe if you're into plants, you can use them to fight enemies too. You can do all of that in Hogwarts Legacy. I mean, honestly, this all sounds really cool. If you played any of the old Harry Potter games, I know you always wanted to have like a big AAA experience. This is it. This is literally it. it it's, got, it's got so much in it. You know, the team looks like put their heart and soul into this project. And I'm just being honest here. Like, this is it. This is the game. There's not going to be... Well, they might do another one, but I'm saying is that this is what you've been asking for. Or if this is your first game, you never played a game before, you're going to be fine here too. It's a great way to start gaming. I mean, you're going to be able to select difficulty level for this game, so you're going to be fine. The pre-orders are available right now. Find links in the description. It's coming to everything on February 10th, 2023, except for the Switch, it will like come out a year after. We're not sure yet, we need more information. But if you get the deluxe edition, you can get a three day early access and some cool extra stuff like this Thestral Mount I mentioned earlier, a dark wizard robe set and a battle arena thing. With this, you're probably wondering if this game has microtransactions. No, it does not have microtransactions. The only thing you're gonna be able to buy for the real money is uh, upgrade from standard to deluxe edition to get the packs, but that's it. By the way, if you like this chill style of the video and would like to see more of it, let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's it. The video is over. Bye.